Hey, you guys, and welcome to episode five. Is this five? I believe it's five. Welcome to episode five, because we definitely missed last week, unfortunately. But I'm here this week, you guys, and I promise to not miss any more. So welcome to episode five of Instill a Mother. I am your host, Yvette, if you are new here. And let's go ahead and get into this week's episode. So, y'all, first of all, let me give y'all a little bit of context of what's going on right now with me. I am so tired. It's like almost, I want to say almost 11 o'clock at night. We are literally leaving at 2 a.m. to go on vacation. We're taking the, the kids on vacation to Orlando. And I have not packed not one thing. All day I have been working on content, trying to make sure that my content is in order for when I leave and every and make sure everything else is in order when I leave. So I had to definitely record this video and I have to still edit it tonight. Anyway, y'all don't care about that. All y'all care about is listening to the episode. <laughs> so that is what's up with me as far as right now. I did drink some coffee. So I'm not tired right now. So thank God for that. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and get into our first segment, you guys, which is sweet and sour. So I'm going to go ahead and start with sour. Now, to be honest, um, the reason why I missed last week is because I was just going through so much emotionally nothing in my physical world changed you guys I was just so emotional so emotional just didn't feel up to doing anything didn't I didn't pick up not one book all week which is not like me because every day I read something I was not going to the gym which is also not like me because I go to the gym every day I was not eating right. I can't tell y'all how many times in one week I ate ice cream, oodle noodles, cup noodles, all of that. I just was in a, in a emotional rut. And I kind of spoke about it in my last episode that I did with my sweet and sour. Um, but I'm going to dive a little bit deeper in it into with this episode. So that is my style where I had a really rough week, honestly. I had a really rough week and it hits different when you, it's nothing changing on the outside, like physically, it's nothing wrong, but everything seems wrong inside. And, you know, people around you may not understand because they're like, Yvette, what is wrong? Like, what 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 is the problem? You, you It's nothing that you really have to complain about. So... That was a lot for me, honestly, and that's why I didn't upload an episode because I really didn't do anything as far as content wise. I didn't do anything, you guys. Like literally, I was on my couch watching TV. <laughs> so, um, as far as my sweet, I will say so me and my son, we were recently riding around and we seen these nice houses, y'all. Beautiful houses by the water, beach houses, beautiful. So my son is very vocal. If he feels some type of way about something, he's going to say it. If he likes something, he's going to say it. If he wants something, he's going to ask for it. So when we had came to a stop, one of the owners of the house, I believe he was the owner because I don't know, but I believe it was his home. He was coming out of his house and my son rolled down the window and he was like, I'm about to say something to him. So, you know, I didn't stop him because I already knew that he was going to say something as far as like, I like your house or something. If it was something crazy, I would have been like, hey, what are you doing? Boy, roll that window back up because it won't our color out there. So, but he rolled down the window and he was like, I like your house. And the guy was like, thank you. So then I asked my son, I was like, you, would you want to move out here? He was like, no. He said, I love our house. And that made me feel so good, you guys, because sometimes as a mom, you feel like that you're not doing enough and you want to give your kids the best. So for him to say that and to see that he appreciates the home that I have been able to provide for him, it means the world to me because that's all, honestly, that I care about when it comes down to being, well, I'm not going to say that's all that I care about, but that's something that really matters to me when it comes down to being a parent, like I want to give 
my kids the best that they can have. So I'm already tearing up, you guys. So I feel like I'm going to cry this episode. But if I cry, I just cry. I got to let it out because I feel like I've been holding it in. Honestly, I don't I have like felt the verge of tears all week, but I haven't like vocally expressed how I felt to anyone. So that's why I probably didn't cry. Um, But this is probably going to be the most (sighs) to date because who knows what's to come in the future episodes. This probably is going to be the most vulnerable I hate that. Well, I'm not going to say I hate that word. I don't hate that word, but I just, I have a hard time pronouncing vulnerable (laughs) that I am going to be on this episode. Um, so, you know, I, I gave y'all backstory on how I got into this position in my life on the first episode. So y'all know all of that. Y'all know that I was dumb because I said I was dumb numerous times or stupid, one of them, <laughs> both, that's what I was, both, okay, but as I'm getting older, and as I am evolving, and as I am learning more about myself, what I like, what I don't like, um, thinking about decisions that I have made in the past, it has been really hard on me, and I guess it has been hard because even though like, I feel like we all make dumb decisions. We all have done something where we wish we could take it back or we just be like, what was we thinking? But when it comes down to children involved, it hits different. And the way that I feel now is not, I was, I didn't feel this way before. Like when I was, you know, I still am young, but when I was young, young having kids, I didn't feel this way. I didn't care. I didn't care. I didn't look at it the way that I'm looking at it now. And I know I'm speaking very vaguely. So let me just, I'm going to try to explain the best way I can on how I feel. So I'm in a state in my life where I'm still healing. Um, I feel like I'm looked at a lot by other people, whether it's family, friends, my kids, dads. I'm looked at as I'm so strong and all last week I felt weak and it really hit me because I've never looked at myself as weak. And the reason why I felt weak is because I just felt like I wanted somebody to come save me. I wanted to play victim and I couldn't, I couldn't. It is so different when I got my tissue ready because I'm already crying. Oh, Lord. (laughs) It's so different when you realize that the place that you're at in life, and that's what I spoke about in my last episode just a little bit, but I didn't really dive into it because we weren't talking about that. But it is really... um, when you realize that the place that you're at in your life is because of the decisions that you have made and you can't place the blame on anybody else, that's something that it really, really, really hits different. And I realized for the longest, I wanted to be able to play victim as in saying, Oh, you know, uh, they're the reason why my life is as hard as it is and blah, 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 and things like that. Or they can help me more and they don't do it. And, you know, it's just, I've always been saying that for years and don't get me wrong. I do feel that way. I do feel like if I had more help, then it would be helpful. But I had to come to realization that Eva is you is you. And this is why I say is me. It's certain things that I want out of life. For example, the job that I work at and the position that I used to be in, I really did not have a lot of free time, a lot of free will, a lot of time to do anything outside of work and be a mom. I really didn't. 
And I just wanted a position to where I was able to kind of make my own schedule, do things at my free will, not be tied down to a phone or anything like that so I can get other things in life done. Now I'm in that position and I still struggle with being able to get things done that I need to get done. So it's like no matter what's given to me, like even when it comes down to the gym, yes, I go to the gym daily. However, I'm not eating the way that I'm supposed to eat. So it's, it's, it's not benefiting me really as far as like losing weight or anything like that. And for the longest, when I had the twins, I was telling myself like, okay, I only can go to the gym for an hour because they only keep the kids for an hour right now. So I can't wait till I could be able to go to the gym for as long as I want to. I'm going to go hard. And now I'm at that point and I'm not doing it. Yes, I go to the gym, but can I go harder in the gym? Yes. So my point in saying these things is that I can be given the opportunity to make my life better. However, I still play victim. I still find an excuse to not do what I'm supposed to be doing. So to realize that I am the reason why my physical reality looks the way that it looks, it hits different. It's so easy to place the blame on somebody else. So easy. So easy. Wouldn't we all love to do that? Wouldn't we all love to place the blame on somebody and be like, it's your fault. You the reason why. But it's so hard. And I'm not going to say it's so hard because it is people that can do it. But it does take for you to put your ego to the side and be able to realize like, no, it's, it's you. Like, it's me. It's me. And to realize that that really is hurtful. And... That makes me cry, not in a way of like, um, I want somebody to feel pity for me, but because I'm just mad at myself and I'm happy that I'm aware of it. I'm happy that I'm learning that now, but it still is hurtful and it still is a healing process. When you try to change your mindset, you guys, when you try to unlearn everything that you have learned, when you try to put your ego to the side, that can be one of the hardest things to do because it's like the only thing that I can really compare it to is like you when you when we are taught how to write, we're taught to write from left to right. Imagine you after all these years writing from left to right, left to right, left to right, left to right. And then somebody comes along and be like, no, you're doing it wrong. You're supposed to write right to left, right to left, right to left. And it's not that it's not possible because if somebody did come along and say, no, that you're wrong and this is how you're supposed to be doing it, you can do it. But the fact of that you're rewiring your brain to do it is difficult. So that's the point that I'm at in my life where when it comes down to the decisions that I have made in my past when it comes down to having kids at an early age, the men that I have decided to have kids with, the choices that I have made as far as my finances, deciding at 18 to co-sign on a car for a man that, like, why? That I barely knew. I'm not, Well, I'm not going to say I barely knew him. I did know him. But at 18, like, girl, 18 18 now I couldn't even tell you this man birthday so it's like why are you doing that you know what I'm saying so it's things like that that have put me in a position right now to where I'm not happy with how things are going in my life and to realize that it's my fault and the only person that can change my physical reality is me that is so difficult for me and that is so like uh, like it's definitely a healing process because I can't reach out for somebody to save me. The only person that can save me is myself. And when you have to depend on nobody but yourself to save you, <laughs> baby, some people you might think like, oh, I can't depend on nobody but myself. I can depend on myself. I can't depend on nobody else. But when your mindset is not in the place that it needs to be, you can't even depend on yourself to save yourself. So... 
when you realize when you're realizing these things and you realize that you're the problem and you can't blame anybody else that is hurtful at least for me it is and that's where I have been all week now granted this is something that I have been working on for months hell years at this point but sometimes stuff just hit different at different points in your life and I feel like it comes at the right time when it's supposed to come and I know I'm gonna cry (laughs) y'all but as I see my kids getting older right my 11 year old he's about to be 12 and he is his own little man right and every day that I look at him and I see him and I see that he's getting taller and he's getting wiser and he has his own personality and just to realize that I have created a path for his life that I don't want him to have. That is very hurtful. Um, And when I say I created a path for his life, I'm speaking of choosing the person that is his father and realizing that he is not the father that he's supposed to be. And that this is something that is going to eventually affect my son. He may not realize it right now, but he is going to realize it. That is very hurtful because I'm going to have to be the one to pick up the pieces. But it's not about me. It's not about me. It's about him. He's my son and I love him. And when you realize that the decisions that you have made in life... has an effect on your kids I feel like that hits so different because it's one thing of me doing something in my lifetime to where it just affects me and I look back and I be like oh I wish I didn't do such and such but when you realize that it affects somebody that is permanent in your life you know somebody that means so much to you y'all that hurts that hurts um and you know and it's not just him you know he's not the only child that I hurt for I feel like that both him and my seven-year-old I look at them and be like man like they are growing up and 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 now I'm in a place in my life where I realize that everybody have their issues that they have in life and sometimes majority of the time when you are raised a certain type of way and you're taught certain things in your environment or things that may have happened to you in your childhood that has an effect on how you are as an adult right and even down to the point of where characteristics that you might not wish that your uh child develops they develop that from their parent, right? And you don't have no control over that because it's just in their DNA. <laughs> it's just in their genetics. And when you when you start to realize that it's not just about laying down with somebody, having sex, and you have a baby with them, and you just, you know, if they decide that they're not going to take care of the child, you just do it on your own. It, it goes so much deeper than that. And I feel like that's where I'm at in my life right now, where I'm trying to heal off of that. Because back then when I was having kids young, I didn't look at it like that. I just thought that I was having a child. I just thought that this was something like I said, something Lord, somebody that I had to take care of for the rest of my life. And I just had to raise them. But now that I'm older and I'm healing and my mindset is changing and I'm evolving, I'm realizing that it's so much deeper than that. So much deeper than that. This is a person that I am raising to be an adult right? You are an adult more than you are a child. So to realize that it's, it's me that 
could potentially have um the blame of the framework for my my child's life that is hurtful now i'm not saying that their life will be bad no i'm not saying that because i'm gonna do everything in my power to make sure that they have a great life but it's like even down to you know my seven-year-old his dad is very much in his life but it's still a broken home he still has to grow up for the rest of his life and his mom and his dad is not together and even that part like even though that's what I grew up on my parents being together like I never realized the importance of it until I mature and that's you know it just makes me wish that I can go back and turn back the hands of times because now it's like having blended household it makes me realize how ooh, like how difficult that is in the raising process when you're raising children um and this is not a situation to where I'm trying to have a pity party because the situation it is what it is but I do feel like that you have to get to a point where you heal from the decisions that you have made or things that you have been through and that's where I'm at right now and it does not feel good like I'm 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 really going through it <laughs> and I'm glad that I'm at this point in my life because I know that on the other side of this, oh my goodness, like that event is going to be amazing. This event right now is already amazing, but that event is going to be even greater. And I can say that wholeheartedly, but getting through this point in my life right now, that shit hard. It's hard. And I just, y'all, Lord, you know, in the beginning of this episode, I said that I felt weak this past week, (laughs) but that's just how I felt in my heart. I know that I'm far from weak. But I will say that sometimes trying to always be strong, trying to always be like the person like, oh, she got it. You know, oh, she's resilient. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Like she she'll get through it. It's all of those things. Yes, but it still hurts. It still hurts. And. I'm just. I don't know. I feel like in today's society is so many kids being brought into this world in broken homes or by men or women that like their the choice of the parents that they have will have an effect on their life and how their life goes. And I feel like it's so easy to lay down and have sex and make a baby, but those things are not looked at. And I feel like they definitely need to be looked at. But I'm not one to sit here and point the finger or point blame because I was that person. I was that person where I was not looking at it like that. So I get it. I get it. But now that I'm on the other side of it and where I'm looking at it like that, I'm like, ooh, don't do that. Like, don't do that. (laughs) Because a lot of the times when you see people having babies with each other, it's not that far like they'll be together for years and then they have a baby and then everything fall to shit and bringing a child in this world changes a lot changes a lot and that's just where I'm at right now you know I want my kids to grow up and not have that story to where like oh my dad was a deadbeat like he didn't do nothing for me like my mom she was strong she was a hard-working woman my mom she worked so many jobs and made sure that I never went without you think I want my kid to have that story no do my kid have that story yes 
And that hurts my heart so bad. Like, I used to look at it like, I got it. I'm going to work this job. Like, one thing about it, I've always been a hustler. Always. But now I'm to the point where I'm like, things got to change. Like, I'm hustling for the wrong thing. Because when you start to look at it and be like, okay, this is a child that's going to grow up and be an adult and I don't want him to have to go through the things I have went through or is going through, whether that's financially, whether it's with a woman, whether it's with having a baby. Like these are not things that I want him to experience. Also, a lot of the times where you see, um, like for example, somebody came in my house to set something up and he was telling me how, His long, um, his cousin, his cousin's dad passed away from overdosing. His cousin's mom passed away from overdosing. His cousin passed away from overdosing. And that situation right there, it, 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 it pretty much confirmed of how I already felt of like how your childhood is or how you might see how your parent is. Sometimes you might go down that road, right? And even though you don't want to go down that road, it's learned behavior, right? So that's what makes me sad because even though I'm trying to be the best that I can be for my kids, I don't want my children to grow up and feel like that this is how it's supposed to be. However, this is the environment that they're growing up in. So that scares me, right? All I can do is try my best to teach them that this is not how it's supposed to be. But I'm not going to sit here in front and say that it doesn't scare me. It does. And it's so much that I want out of life. I want to give my kids the world. I want my kids to be taken care of. I want to give my kids generational wealth. I want them to have the best life possible. I want them to have great parents. I want so much for my kids. I want so much for myself. And when you're still trying to heal and be a mom at the same time, it can be so hard because all this week, like I said, I have not wanted to do anything. But at the end of the day, I still had to be a mother. I st- it, it, My kids don't understand, oh, I'm not in the mood. Oh, I don't want to be bothered. Oh, I'm having a bad week. I can't get sick. Okay, I cannot get sick. Not too long ago, I had the stomach virus. I still had to tend to my kids, still. So me trying to heal and be a mother at the same time, almost, almost, I'm not saying it is, it almost seems damn near impossible because I can't have a bad day. I can, I can, but I can't. They don't understand that at all. And... It's plenty of days where I don't feel like I'm not in the mood. I don't want to be bothered. I don't want to cook. I don't want to do none of these things at all, but I still have to. They don't understand that. So I said all of that to say I'm still healing. I'm looked at by a lot of people as strong, resilient, a great mom. Like I'm looked at as all of these things. And I'm not saying that I'm not that. I'm very much so that. But I still need help. I need help. I'm still healing. I still need a shoulder to cry on. I still cry. I still need a moment to just breathe and get my life together. And it's one thing trying to do that just on your own as an individual person, but it's a whole nother thing when you're trying to do that as a mom. My whole brand, for the longest, I was trying to figure out what route I wanted to take, what did I want to do, what did I want to teach other people. And, you know, it hit me that I want to show other moms that you could still be in shape, still 
do your makeup, still look nice, still do this, still do that, and still be a mother. Hence the name of the podcast, and still a mother. And I wanted to show moms that you can still be that girl and still be a mother. And I'll be the first to say that I am not representing everything that I want to represent right now. And I feel like that's why I beat myself up so much because it is getting harder. It's getting harder to still do all of these things, but I'm determined to show people that it's still possible because it is, it's just a change of your mindset. And that's what I mean when I say I can be given every opportunity to like, Okay, I could say this is why I can't do this, but then that changes and then I still don't do what I want to do, right? So that's because obviously it's not the situation, it's my mindset. That's why I'm so big on changing my mindset, which is something that I have been working on daily. So for me to not open a book all week, I was really in a rut because this is something that I have been dedicated to. But it's time for me to stop just reading, feeding my mind with positivity and actually actually put it into action so I can so I can show every mom out there that it is still possible to live your life, do everything that you want to do to make you happy. I'm not talking about kids, you happy and still be a damn good mother. And still provide a great life for your kids. Because if I don't do anything else, I am going to show my kids that my my mom made a way. I want to give my kids the world. Okay? And I just had to come to realize that, Yvette, if this is what you want, you have to do it. So, I'm still healing, y'all. But it's going to get done. And I'm going to show y'all and I want to be a motivation and I want to be an inspiration for all mothers out there that you can get this shit done. Just figure out what you want to get done and do it. And I'm not just talking to you. I'm talking to myself also because there's so much that I want to do that I'm not doing. So going forward is no more excuses. And I mean that shit. It ain't no more excuses. Yes, I'm still healing. Yes, I'm still going to cry. Yes, I'm going to still have my days. And I promise to be open with y'all and give y'all the real. Because one thing I don't never want to do is try to portray a certain image. Like, I try to be an open book, as open as as I can. Like, at some point, you got to have some type of privacy, right? Like, as y'all can see, I don't really go into my relationship that I'm currently in because... That ain't none of y'all business. I mean, I ain't gonna say it's none of y'all business, but you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you gotta keep some things private. I am going to be an open book to all moms out there because I am a teenage mom. I am a young mom. And my goal is to be a successful mother at a young age. Okay? So, woo! I ain't cry too bad, y'all, did I? I hope I did. I'm a, when I look back at this footage, I'm like, oh, girl, uh-uh. <laughs> uh-uh. you look ugly. <laughs> but anyway, you guys, so that is it for that portion of the episode. And I'm still healing. <laughs> okay. Um, as y'all know, the last segment is I tell you guys something that I read during the week that resonates with this episode. But as y'all heard me say, I haven't read anything, but I was listening to a podcast. Um, It's the Social Proof Podcast. And one of the hosts up there, her name is Danny. It's a woman. And she was saying that um, I just want to tell y'all what she was saying because it, it really resonated with me. She was saying that she has always been looked at as a strong woman and a strong woman. And even though she is a strong woman, she still needs help. She still has her days where she want to cry. She still wants somebody to lend a helping hand. And I resonated with that so much because I can't tell y'all how many times where 
I have been looked at as a strong woman so that I don't need help, whether it's from my kid's dad, whether it's from me asking them for something and they say, you got it, you got it. Or whether it's even them verbatim telling me the reason why I don't do such and such for my child is because I know it's going to get taken care of by you being literally told that. And even when it come down to friends, friends that were supposed to be godmothers for my kids saying that they don't do such and such because they know that I don't need help like that. You know, that really hit for me because even now with every, with relationships that I have been in, it seems like that I have always been looked at as strong and being that I was looked at that way, they felt that I didn't need help. And I do. So that really resonated with me, you guys, because even though I am strong, just like this past week, I had a moment where I just needed a shoulder to cry on. I needed to somebody for somebody to understand how I felt. So I want to just tell somebody else or any other mom or any other woman or whatever, or even if you're a man listening to this, just because somebody is strong, that doesn't mean that they don't need you. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't offer help. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't be there. Okay. Because even though we are strong, we are strong because we have to be, it ain't always because we want to be right. Because my kids is never going to go without ever. So I have no point. I have no choice but to provide that life for them. But that doesn't mean I always want to do it by myself. Okay. <laughs> so that is the end of this episode, y'all. I ho- I feel like I was all over the place with this episode, but I hope it resonated with somebody. I hope it helped somebody. <sighs> now I got to go pack because... Listen, this is not, we call it a family vacation, but is it really a vacation if kids is involved? It's a vacation for them. Okay? It ain't no vacation for me. (laughs) So, all right, y'all. I'll see y'all next week. Bye.